Hello, hello, beautiful ladies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to, um, to this channel, Kingdom Culture Women. And we are a group just after God's heart. And you are so welcome. We're so glad that you're able to tune in with us and just be part of this ministry as we continue to grow, right? And, and get closer to God. And today is June 9th and it's Thursday. We're going to talk about Go and Stand. It's the it's the title of this message, and we're going to be pretty much in, in, in the book of Acts in chapter 5, but primarily focusing on 17 through 20. But as we uh, dig in, before we dig in, let's, let's pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord Jesus, that never returns void. Lord, we thank you, Father, that your faithful Holy Spirit your word says you are our teacher and we need you, Holy Spirit, to hover over us, in us, and through us, Father God, that we could understand the message, Lord Father God, that, Lord, we can comprehend it and, Father God, and execute it, Father God, apply it, Jesus, in our everyday lives, Father God, to treasure just like Mary did, Father God. Your word says that Mary and Luke, Father God, she would cherish the things in her heart, Father God. So I pray that we cherish every word that is spoken here, Father God. I pray for open ears, spiritual eyes, Lord, to, to and, and, and heart ready, Lord, an open heart, Father God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you destroy and, and any, any legalistics, any religion, any thought that we have heard in the past, Lord, that is not aligned with your word, your truth today, Lord, to be demolished. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray, Lord, that you protect this platform, this call, Father God, that my word spoke, speaking is not me speaking, it be your word spoken in and through me. Holy Spirit, we thank you, Father God, that, Lord, your word says, if you are with us, who can be against us? And all the works of the devils are destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless your holy name. And everyone says, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's go to um, Book of Acts 5, 17 through 20. I'm going to read that part. But the high priest rose, and all who were with them, that is part of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousies, okay? They were arrested, the apostles, and put into public prison. There they go again. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Hallelujah, right? So let's talk about that. But in order for us to really understand the meat of the story of what's happening, I have to go back and share a little bit um, what is actually happening in the previous chapter. So in the previous chapter, chapter four, we talked about that a little bit yesterday, right? We, it was saying that there was many signs and wonders were being done, right? It says that more believers were added to the Lord and multitudes, right? Both men and women, right? We had read that. They carried out the sick, all right? And verse 15, I'm talking about now in chapter four, chapter four, 14 it says that more believers were added to the lord and multitudes both men and women and in verse 15 they were carried out the sick to the streets and they laid him out on cots and mats that as peter came by at least his shadow might fall on them people also came from towns and around jerusalem bringing the sick those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. I mean, just think about it. They were all laid out on the streets. Everybody says, hey, neighbor, you know, let me come pick you up. You know, you're on a wheelchair, and you go pick up that neighbor, and you go, hey, there's some, the miracle's going to happen, right? Right now, like when we hear some big event happening, right, you're telling everybody, like when we found out when the enemy was uh, or satanic worship was happening in Scottsdale, right? It spread, right? All the Christians were, boom, hands on deck, in prayer, on their knees, right? And the word was out. The word was out. <laughs> They're bringing people everywhere. Hey, you want to be healed? You better show up, right? So I think that's super awesome, right? It just, I don't know, it just gets me excited because I can, I'm a visual person. So in my mind, I play like this movie. 
of like kind of what's happening, right? So that indicates that the Holy Spirit was so powerful manifested in and around Peter that those who only came near him experienced the healing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah and amen. It was nothing Peter did. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. God was doing extraordinary miracles, right? So we read in, 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 in Acts 517, the high priest rose up with jealousy. He was mad people were being healed. He was mad of the crowd, right? He was mad because people were, be were believing in the name of Jesus right don't we have that now right when we, if we go to the street preaching i mean i don't know if you guys seen street preachers but i have so they're in the street preaching and you hear people oh get out of here you know they're like just pulling them down you know talking about them yelling bad words at them you know um trying to discourage him and, and you know throwing things at them my pastor was a street past uh preacher as well too he said he remembers like people would throw things at him i mean just think about it nobody they didn't want they weren't interested in the name of jesus they didn't want to hear so they the high priest they were they were upset right they had this high crowd and oh no people are getting healed what's happening they were jealous they wanted that and they couldn't have that <laughs> they didn't even want jesus name in their mouth so not gonna happen right so they got arrested again verse 18 well we read in chapter four that they got arrested so here those guys go again right so they get arrested and we're reading chapter like we read you know they they were arrested and remember they prayed remember they got together they gathered for that god to give them boldness so they can keep preaching the word remember we just read that in chapter four well they got arrested again they got arrested, but God, but God, but God. There's always a but God. I don't have my, my water bottle. I always have this sticker that says, but God. Okay, but God. And then my coffee, because those are two things I drink. And they both say, but God. So on verse 19, during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, go and stand in the temple, right? and speak to the people all the words of life we just read that god sent them to be honest with you i believe in the hot spot the temple because you know why because in the morning they did their um sacrifice their offering to the temple so he sent them god is god is a god of order he's intentional he and he has a plan to execute he knows why he's doing and what he says why he says it sometimes we just miss it sometimes we could be at the right time right place right hour right minute and phew, it goes right over our head we miss it but see god knew that people gathered at at daybreak right in the morning and and they he knew that people would show up and that's when god's like go <laughs> at the temple mind you guys the sadducees and the sanhedrins they're already against them, right? So now he's sending him, I call it the hot spot. I don't know what that word came to mind. He sent him to the hot spot. So now, as we read on, like I said, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, which is the council, are now against them, right? They investigated. Now I'm going up to the top of chapter chapter um, chapter five, okay? Like I'm around uh, 22, somewhere around there. Okay, so now if you want to keep up, I'm not going to read the whole story because it's really long, but it's really good. So I'm only highlighting big points. So they investigated the prison to find out where they were. And then verse 24 says that they were greatly perplexed. Why were they greatly perplexed? Because they were not there. They were not found. They're like, what is it going to be with these guys? What's going to, what's, you know, what's happening with these guys, right? So let's focus on what the angel of the Lord did not tell them, did not say to them. When, when they got released out of prison, right? God didn't tell the disciples, go do a Bible study, go worship, go pray, right? Go hang out, go celebrate. No, he didn't. He just said, he said, go, right? Speak to the people. 
go and stand and speak to the people. That's not usually what we think when something good usually happens, right? I don't know about you guys, but if I think if I get out of prison, like I'm gonna be like, I want my favorite food. Um, where's everybody at? I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna celebrate, right? I mean, you know, I just got thrown to prison. I've been doing, you know, I've been doing great work for the Lord, right? No way. No way. God says, go speak. Go speak to the people. Hey, go and preach. Go and preach the gospel, right? That's our God-given agenda, guys. That's the agenda God has given us. We have forgotten the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? Well, let's talk about it. It's in Matthew 28. You guys want to go to Matthew? I didn't put that on the book, on, on the thing, but it's Matthew 28. 28, 16 through 20. So it says, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Hmm. See how God puts that in there? But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority not some, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do? You're going to teach them to observe all that have I commanded you. What are you going to teach them? What do you know right now about Jesus? What have you learned? Teach them that, right? Whatever, Wherever you're at. God knows we're in different levels. Whatever he showed you, whatever he's he's spoken to, whatever you have learned, whatever you have applied, whatever lesson, go and, and, and teach him to observe what you where you're at. And behold, I will be with you always. So in the time you're teaching them, you're showing them, he's going to be there with you. He's absolutely there with you, okay? To the ends of the age. What does that mean? When you die, <laughs> He's going to be there with you when you die. He's so therefore, like his word says, he's never going to leave you or forsake you. So we need to get involved. We need to, we need um, to remember that great commission, right? When we get involved, but sometimes we get involved in the wrong things, right? Sometimes we get caught up with, um, so, you know, like with our plans and, and, you know, like our agenda and our dreams and our vision, you know, what I want, this is what I want. This is my vision plan that I got for myself because I am in control. You see all those eyes going on? A lot of I, 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 me, myself, and I, that's what I got going on is whatever I want to do, right? We are wonderful, right, at worshiping, prayers, praises, Bible studies, right? We're good at gathering, right? With, with, with our brothers and sisters and enjoying, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, God, that is part of us walking with Christ is to do that, absolutely. But is as we are going, we have to uh, spread the gospel. Is as what we're doing, stand, right? I said, stand and go wherever you're standing, whatever you are doing. If you're standing in line, I mean, come on now, we all stand in line. We all stand in line at, at the at fast food places, right? Um, you could buy the meal behind them and, and tell the uh, cash register, hey, um, tell the person behind me that Jesus loves them, right? I mean, you can do like supernatural, awesome things like that, that throws people off. I mean, what I've been doing lately is I've been telling people, hey, God loves you, or hey, Jesus loves you, and they always get thrown off. It's, it's not funny, but I always notice like a little hesitation in them. Uh, uh, yeah, how would I say? <laughs> Planting that seed, right? They're going to know and they're going to recognize, right, that who my Savior is by just a word. I'm not throwing the gospel on their face. I'm not throwing the Bible on their face and telling them, you sinners. <laughs> no, that's not what we do, right? You know, but it's just gentle words, gestures, actions, you know, and, and you know, wherever you're at, wherever you're standing, right? And the worshiping, right, we had to put that into practice because we used to listen to music of the world, right? And we would dance and woohoo right but we listen to worship and all of a sudden we're like this all of a sudden we're like frozen until we work it up and then we put our hands up like this 
and then maybe like this or maybe like this or then maybe like that right it's a process right with prayer maybe we don't know how to pray we say well i don't know how to pray okay well use some words okay well lord jesus i need your help okay you started somewhere hallelujah thank you jesus right you got to start somewhere the same thing with praise when people say what kind of praise report you have you know um i i mean i've been around and people when i ask those type of questions um there they, is a long pause and no one has any praise report to say i'm like thinking you don't have no praise report i mean you're breathing I would tell them, hallelujah, you're alive. You're in this, you're you're in this group at this time. Praise God, your heart is pumping. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yes, that's a praise report. You see, we're learning. So we're, as we're learning with those type of things, I just gave you some examples. Sometimes you do Bible studies, you don't understand, right? And so you, you until more you you get to other groups, right? God starts working with you and all that, and all that, right? I've been there, and everything that I'm telling you guys, I've been there. Okay, and I'm still learning. And and, and the, the more that I think about it, the more I read, and I, I feel like I know nothing. I feel like I go right back to like, ah, Lord, there's just so much to learn about you, right? So much. Um, but wherever you're at, whatever you're at, whatever you're doing, just, just teach that, show that to somebody. And you know what, guys? I'm here to tell you that when you teach and you show someone something, what you did or you observe to honor God, it helps you to grow that that pillar, that anchor, right? It it when it's something about when you speak it and you 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 do it. It's like you know those words. You know when people say, um, you know, words are just hot air, or oh yeah, let me see you put those words into action, right? But when you speak it and you do it, guess what? Your actions speaking it, and you're teaching somebody of things that you learn. You know, I normally say like, this is what I did. This is what I learned from the Lord. You know, this is what He showed me, right? You don't know if that person may need that message at that specific time, right? So yes, it this is necessary and is good, right? Um, it, we need to do, we need to get together, we need to worship, we need to praise, we need to Bible studies, we need to not forsake the gathering. The word says, absolutely, I am not discounting that. I'm not telling you to jump ship and stop doing that. Not at all. That is part of it. However, we cannot neglect evangelism. We cannot neglect spreading the word. We cannot neglect sharing 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 right the angel of the lord told the disciples to go and stand we must go into the world and make our stand what is your stand what do you stand for do you stand for uh you know sometimes we have our little favors of what we stand for right we only stand for um you know uh you know what is that pro-life or 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 you know i only stand for the government you know for pray for them for the for Christians to rise up. None of that is wrong. None of that is wrong. But the number one message, the number one pillar, the number one thing has to be about Jesus is what is spreading the gospel, what Jesus did for you. And then everything will flow at the right time, at the right purpose. Everything will come out. People will know, right, of who you're walking with, who you're standing with, who is it? You know, like I said, when I go to the cash registers, I just say, Jesus, God bless you. Jesus loves you. And they get thrown off, right? Because that's what I stand for, right? I, you know, that's, that's what I believe, right? So go and take your stand in Christ, right? Take your stand, guys, because we read, when we read in, um, in Acts chapter five, I mean, these guys went through some tough, tough, tough things i mean they grabbed them um the sadducees the council they grabbed them now i'm back in chapter five and they're questioning them you know why did i, I restricted you they said not to teach in the name of jesus right but peter and apostle the same thing they told them the other chapter guys they said the same thing so that tells me sometimes we don't even have to come up with the same fancy words use the same thing you've been using what did they say we must obey god rather than men simple you got to obey God. They're going to, they're not going to reject you. Right. And, and, and then he gave them a history story, which I think that's pretty bold. Anyways, he gave them a history story, basically telling them you guys killed him, right? You killed him and you hung him on a tree. Right. But then he says on 31, but God exalted him at the right hand as a leader, savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom has given to those who obey him. That's you guys. You guys have the Holy Spirit. And that's what he's saying. I got the Holy Spirit and I'm going to keep continue to spread the message, right? Which is what? Repent, right? For the repent for and, and ask for the forgiveness of sin, right? 
That's what Jesus came, right? And when they heard this, when they heard this, it says in 33, they wanted to kill him. Listen to how much anger and hate these guys had, right? They wanted to kill him. They wanted to murder them because what? Why? Because you're using Jesus' name because people are being um, saved and healed. And this is the second time around. He's, I mean, the first one was with Jesus, right? The first time was with Jesus, but they've been rejecting the, the prophets you know, from the beginning, they've been killing the prophets. So they really are like totally, um, they want nothing to do with the name of Jesus, right? And then we keep reading that Gamma Mill, I think I'm probably saying his name wrong, but he also actually was a little tidbit here for you guys, it's a little extra, is that he was actually Paul's um, teacher. And it says here, he was held a teacher of the law, held in honor. So he was actually Paul's teacher. But anyways, just a little side note. And, you know, he told them, hey, look, and if you go all the way to the bottom of the chapter, he's like, look, there's other people here, guys. Here's some word of wisdom. There's some other people that said, you know, they, they were the one or, or they wanted to be followers. But guess what? Those two guys, they got scattered. One got killed and nothing came out of it. And then he goes, but I tell you what, though, I tell you what, though, be careful, because if, if this is from God, you won't be able to overthrow them. And you may be fighting God. You may be going against them. But guess what? They, they He says, leave them alone. They took their advice. They let them go. But guess what? Guess what? It says here on 40, they beat them and then charge them not to speak in the name of the Lord. They beat them. You know what they did? They got scorched. You know what that means? They got fogged. You know what that means? They got hit 39 times. You know, you know what that means? Like Jesus. That was a shadow of Jesus. Exactly what they happened to Jesus is happening to them right there. They got beat down also and, and got fogged 39 times. And what did those guys do? They were rejoicing and counting worthy to suffer and dishonor for the name. And, and every day in the temple, from house to house, they still went to the temple. <laughs> I mean, that's what they got themselves. That's where God sent them. They still there. They went to the temple. Okay. They went to the temple and they still went house to house, teaching and preaching the word of God, preaching Jesus, right? And that's what we have to do, guys. We must go into the world and take our stand, right? And you know what? I was earlier, um, I was out there watering my plants and I have my my doggies, my doggies things, like my I lost my puppy. Well, she wasn't a puppy, but I call her a puppy. My favorite dog in the whole wide world. I lost her last September and, and I, I miss her. I miss her. So I was telling my husband, I was like, oh, I got to go drop off those donations, um, all the Tassie's toys and things, you know, to a shelter. And I was like, oh, man, I miss her. I miss her so much. And then he goes, yeah, I miss her, too. And then, boom, the Holy Spirit drops some knowledge on me. He says, you know, whew, thank you, Lord. He's like, you know, you love her. He goes, and, you know, people's souls, people's lives, they're my treasure. They're my treasure and I care about every person that goes to hell I care about every life because I made them I care about their salvation and I was like he goes I treasure them I treasure them those that I made who did he make he didn't just make the saved he didn't just make those who are predestined on you God God knew who's going to be saved no he's still waiting for us right, to go and spread the message to the unsaved, to go and, and, and those who are lost and broken. Those are God's treasures. You see, sometimes we have the wrong treasures. We focus on the wrong things, right, selfish motives, right? Like I said earlier, me, myself, and I, but God, his treasure is humans, is souls. He cares about souls, the lost one, right? So go and take your stand, right? So let me pray. If you don't know Jesus and you want to get to know him, he is so wanting you to be with him. He is so longing to have a relationship with you. It is never too late. Today is the day for you if you have not uh, accepted your life 
and 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 giving it to Jesus, right? He is the God who saves. And if that is you, or maybe you you sinned against the Lord and, and you want to ask for forgiveness and repent, right? What does repent means? Turn back, right? Turn back, make, make a decision, make a decision of not to do that again, that sin, and ask for forgiveness so that you, right? So God can can free you from, from that and forgive you, right? And God says he will, he will forgive you. Everything will be wiped as white as snow. And he's, and if you want to invite him into your life to repeat after me, Father God, I, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for dying on the cross for, our, for the sins of the world. And Lord, I repent and I turn back from, from my sins and, and ask you to forgive me, Lord, of all the things that I've done, Lord, knowing and unknowing, Lord, Father God, I don't want to sin no more, Father God. Your word says, if I believe that you died and you rose again, that you died and you rose again in three days, Lord, that I will be saved, Father God. And Lord, Father God, enter into my heart, Lord. I believe you are the Son of God. And Father God, your word says that you will give me the Holy Spirit to live inside me, to dwell and guide me. Holy Spirit, baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Father God, we want to walk with you every day of our life. Every day, Lord, show us your ways, your commands, Father God, that we may teach others and, and have the life that is promised to us is to live free and in abundance, Father God. I pray, Jesus, that you use me, Lord, that you move me, Father God. Father God, I thank you for the gift of salvation and the deliverance that you're doing right now, Jesus, and that the angels... They are rejoicing, Lord. They are rejoicing, Lord, because it's one more into your kingdom, Father God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this message, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you give us a courageous and bold spirit, Father God. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, that you will lead us into the right crosswalk of the people, Father God, divine appointments, Jesus, right assignments, Lord. I pray when we wake up, Lord, that we have you in mind, Lord, that we have your treasures in mind, Lord. What is those treasures? It's lost so it's your children, Father God. You care about the lives that you created, Father God. And I thank you in advance, Lord Jesus, that you have given us this message, Lord, because we need to hear it, Lord, Father God. You care about those who are going to hell, Lord. You care about those who are not going to make it, Father God. You're asking us to do it. You're asking us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I pray for boldness, Father God, that you may lead us, Jesus, lead us. And, and Father God, light up the path, Father God, that we won't turn back, Lord Jesus. And we, we're not going to care, Lord, what happens, Father God. Lord, we read it through your scriptures. Lord, you are there. You are with us, Father God. Your ways are not our ways, Jesus. All we have to do is obey like they did. They didn't question you when 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 the apostles got out of prison and, and when you said go and stand and go preach and go to the stand at the temple. They didn't question you, Lord. They just went. They got up and went, Lord. Help us to not question and contemplate, Father God. You're not a God of a gray, of uncertainty or confusion. You are a God who, who, who speaks, lest your yeses be yeses and your noes be noes, Lord, Father God. There is no question mark when you give us direction, Father God. You tell us to go and stand, and it will be, Lord, in Jesus' mighty, powerful name. We love you, Father God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.